So in today's video we're going to have a look at management accounting decision and control because this is a subject that quite a few of you in the Facebook group are currently studying and it's also quite a wide topic and something that students just don't tend to get their head around which is absolutely fine so we're going to discuss that today. So what we need to get our heads around is there is two different types of costing. I'm going to try not to swivel so much on this chair because it's really squeaky if you can hear that. So we've got absorption costing and we've got marginal costing. And the main difference between the two is simply that absorption costing is looking at full costing. So what do we mean by full costing? What it's doing is it's looking at fixed cost and variable costing. So marginal costing only looks at the variable element of costing and there is a hundred different reasons why we have these two different types of costing. Um, so I'm not going to go into the masses of detail behind why that is, but just know that that's the only difference. And a couple of other things that we need to mention with marginal costing and absorption costing is prime cost. So prime cost is just your direct cost. So once again, if we were to put absorption costing just up here, what we'd see is that that's split between direct costs and indirect costs. So your direct costs are going to be things like labour, materials, um, etc. That is directly attributable to that product. So where somebody's making a chair, for instance, then their labour, if they're only making that one chair, is going to be directly attributable to the chair. Whereas you might be renting a building to produce many different products, so you can't then put the rent cost of that building to one product it has to be split between quite a few so that's an indirect cost now marginal costing actually looks at behavior so it looks at the behavior of the cost itself i.e is it a fixed cost is it variable is it semi-fixed is it a stepped cost for example a step fixed cost so that's then split between its variable element and its fixed element so if you're ever given a question around marginal costing in the exam and it says, you know, total um, costs here are 200,000 of which 100,000 is fixed costs, then we want to strip that fixed cost out when we're trying to work out the cost of one unit. We'll plug it back in again later on when we're trying to work out overall profits. So if you're asked to prepare a statement, but for that moment when you're working out the cost per unit, we don't want to be looking at it. So the main thing to remember really in this topic is that when you're looking at absorption costing, there are four steps to consider. And I've done a video on this before, so I'll put a link to it just up here. But those four steps are firstly, you want to look at the cost and say, of these costs that we've got here, what is direct and what is indirect? So again, direct is direct labour, direct materials, etc. That can be attributable to that one product, whereas indirect is things like rent of the building, um, gas for the building, electricity for the building, etc. So then what we want to do is allocate those indirect costs that we've got to a cost centre. And with cost centres, what you're going to have is production cost centres, and then you're going to have the likes of service cost centres. So if we look at what they are, you're going to have something like HR, uh, fine at the finance department is a service cost as well. The production department is going to be the likes of those that are working on creating the chair. So a workshop is a production cost, for example, or um, flooring. The flooring department is a production cost. So step three is taking these service costs that we've got and splitting them further into the production costs. So say if you had a hundred pound in service costs in step two, by the end of step three, we want to have nothing left in the service cost because that £100 has been split between the other departments. Now step four, once we've got all of those costs in the right departments for these indirect costs, we can then work out what the total absorption rate is, i.e. how much is it going to cost us to produce one unit. So if we've got 100,000 hours of labour, then we're going to take that total cost and divide it by that 100,000 hours of labour and that will give us the cost per unit for example. And finally, what we want to work out is the absorbed cost per unit. So what we're going to take is the direct cost of producing one unit. We're going to add on the indirect cost that we've just worked out in those four steps together. And then that's going to give us the total cost of producing that one unit. And it's as simple as that. So I hope you found this useful. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you did. Consider subscribing as always because I do try to cover lots of different topics on the channel and if you have any suggestions or areas of concern that you currently um, don't understand with your studies then let me know in the comments section below 
and I shall catch you at the next one.